After the Bank of Canada's huge decision this week to raise the overnight rate by 1%, we're going to be discussing if a soft landing is still achievable. Is it still in the picture? Can we raise interest rates, tame inflation, and save the economy in the long run? Well, that's what we'll be going over today. So if you don't know anything about what a soft landing is, we'll go through the definition. We'll hear some things that Tiff had to say. And we'll finish it off by looking through an example of a country that's just a couple steps ahead to see if it is achievable. But if this is your first time here, my name's Nick. Welcome to Ways to Wealth. Before we get into the video, huge favor, huge ask. If you learn something new or you get some value out of the video, hit that like button for me. I definitely appreciate that. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on. We do videos like this every single Sunday, so make sure to come back to the channel. And with all that being said, let's get right into the video. So let's start off by talking about what a soft landing is. So a soft landing is the goal of a central bank when it seeks to raise the interest rates just enough to stop an economy from overheating and experiencing high inflation. And they are doing this without causing a severe downturn. So when you raise the interest rates, what you're doing is you're tightening the money supply. You're making money more expensive. They're hoping that this will kill demand. They're hoping that with the money being more expensive, they're hoping to kill the demand side of the equation, allowing the supply side to catch up. Now, with all that being said, they want to make sure that they don't tighten too much that will hurt the economy in the long run. That is in plain simplicity what the soft landing is now if we take a look at canada's inflation rate we're gonna see just how much the progress has gone so we started to see inflation hit outside of the norm which is two percent that is the goal of the bank of canada to keep inflation at two percent as early as a year ago so july 2021 we saw rates the inflation rate hit 3.7 percent and the last rating that we saw was 7.7. So what TIFF is trying to do is he's trying to keep inflation under control by raising the interest rate. Now, this is where a lot of questions come into play. And we'll listen to what TIFF has to say specifically about getting ahead of the curve. The desire to front load uh, our interest rate response. By front loading uh, the increase in interest rates, we're trying to avoid the need for even higher interest rates further down the road. Um, as I've stressed a couple of times, uh, front loaded uh, tightening cycles tend to be associated with softer landings. And our objective is to get inflation back to target with a soft landing. So when we hear Tiff talk about getting ahead of inflation, it brings me back to that January video that I did, and if you haven't seen it, I'll link it above, about the Bank of Canada's hesitation to move higher on the interest rate. Again, going back to this chart, we can see here that the Bank of Canada knew inflation was rising. We saw it go from that 3.7% all the way up to approaching five, and the Bank of Canada froze in January. They were waiting for what the U.S. was going to do. They were waiting to see more data. The fact of the matter is, is that they're not front loading at all. When we look at a country that is actually front loading, we could take a look at South Korea. We're going to pull up the data here to see what the South Korean interest rates are. And we can see between 2021 and 2022, they actually started to raise the rates. And when we look more specifically, we can see here in November, they made their first move. So South Korea raises the rate 25 bips to 1% on the overnight rate. And they followed that up in January with another 25 bit move. So this is something that uh, what Tiff is talking about coming to reality. One of the few countries that actually moved in 2021 to raise the rates to get ahead of inflation which they were seeing now when we take a look at the data a little bit more we can see here the uh, correlation between the inflation rate in blue and the interest rate so we could see here that there is somewhat of a similarity they both move in similar patterns and when we take a look at the 
end of the curve, more in the recent times, we could see that the inflation rate in South Korea is actually going out of control. Maybe not so high as Canada and could be a little bit of a different economy, but it should be the same type of result. So when we take a look at something more uh, in relative terms, we could see on the five year uh, perspective of the chart, we could see South Korea is trying to get ahead of inflation. We can also see on the one year chart, this uh, it, it looks to be a little bit, you know, like South Korea is actually achieving its goal. Again, by looking at the long chart, it doesn't look to be doing as well. So this is definitely a concern. Looks good on the short end, but when we zoom out, we look at the 25 year, it looks like they still have some work to go. And when we take a look at what their latest inflation prints have been, it was 6% in June, 5.4% in May, and it looks to be still increasing even though they moved early in late 2021 to raise the interest rate. So that is the big question right now. And South Korea could definitely be something to take into consideration and keep an eye on to see what their inflation rate is doing, especially since their central bank moved a lot quicker than the Bank of Canada. Now, we've touched on this on a video before, but when we take a look back at history and when we take a look back to that stagflationary period from the 70s to the 80s, we could see here that when inflation or the CPI, which is the uh, blue and red line, raises above 5%, the Fed or the Bank of Canada, let's say, for example, needed to raise the overnight rate above what the percentage of inflation was in order to bring it down. So that is definitely on the table right now. If we continue to see inflation moving higher, we could be hitting that three to four to five percent on the overnight rate and definitely something to be super scared about. So based on what I'm seeing today, if that demand factor isn't killed, if inflation continues to go higher, soft landing is out of question. It's off the table. But let me know down below what your thoughts are. Can Tiff Macklem and the Bank of Canada save this or are we doomed? If you're still here with me, don't forget, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate all your support. I hope you all have a great week in the markets. Happy trading.